You're watching Caught for Two. Greg, thanks for being here today. Always great to be on your channel. And you've got something special for us planned. I do. So, uh, yeah. So, if you are uh, watch the channel, then um, this is not going to be the normal rabbit hole kind of thing. We're going to try to stay on target. Um, so, I often... Um, That's a different fan. franchise, you know. Yes, it is, actually. That is, I'm interested. That's good that you, that you notice that, although you're trying to get me to stay off target. Uh -huh. um, so, I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, the card game. It's my favorite game. Uh, I thought I just spoiled one of our lists. But um, I oftentimes will look at like the forums and BGG and Reddit and whatnot, and I have noticed more and more and more there's like a lot of people asking general, like, how do I get into this game kind of thing. And so this video is going to try to attempt to answer some questions that a, a player approaching the game will, will be asking. And so the game itself, I mean, it's almost 10 years old. It's huge. A lot of people have been buying collections and so forth. And they'll just be inundated with just piles and piles of cards. And it's just, it really can be quite a daunting task to know where should you start. Yeah, it's overwhelming. I mean, yeah, you get some of these Kickstarters with like pounds and pounds of minis and it's overwhelming and it's and it really detracts from your desire to sometimes play the game or to get a toehold. So uh, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna review the game, but I will talk about how the, the distribution model has been going on so that you can kind of understand the different avenues that you can go in uh, to play the game. So the game itself is done now. I mean, it's a, they do say... Just, okay. They just finished it, right? Yeah. So the game has just been completed, although before COVID, uh, FFG said that, they, they, that they, they may do some other avenue to continue it, um, and that they would right. announce that at Gen Con, but COVID, I think, has changed a lot of that. And, and, and I think most people accept that the game is complete. It feels like a complete game, and, uh, and there is some possible future that maybe something could come out who knows okay mm -hmm. but a lot of people are approaching the game because it's of its pedigree because um it's uh you know the lord of the rings show is going to be you know is a uh, is just been wrapped filming and will be coming out there's a lord of the rings show amazon spent like an insane amount of money on the show really Re rehashing this no 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 just they're going to do like second filmed? age second age stuff second age okay. yeah so uh it's it's they are still selling it and they're doing reprints but they get grabbed up quickly a lot of people like I say like to get um, buy collections and things um, so but at the moment uh, you know it's it's a done it's a done deal so um, it's also very in the time of COVID it's very so, solo soloable and that's a question and something and we'll talk about a lot of mm -hmm. people like to play it solo you know that's how I play it mm -hmm. okay um, so first I want to just talk about the how the distribution model because that in itself is a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, newer... Can you say also like your involvement in this? You are seriously involved in this game. This isn't just like games. a yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good point. So it is kind of a lifestyle game. Yeah, you know? it's a kind of game that you can really get into. It listen to podcasts, read blogs, you know, build decks, um, just get totally into it, and it and it can soak up time outside of the game. They call it the meta. So there's a lot of time outside of the game that you can spend thinking like, oh, what mm -hmm. if I put these heroes together? Or what if I did this to make this kind of a deck? Or what if I wanted to go against this quest and, and try to build a specific thing for that? And so it, it can soak up a lot of time. And, and, and a lot of lifestyle games, uh, uh, you know, can you can just dip your toe in. You know, you can play um, X-Wing X the Miniatures game and, and just set up set a few pieces on the table and, and fight ships and have a good time with it but you know you're you are there is a huge scope of the game that is there um, that you're not getting so i do want to mention also that uh that the game is on octagon okay not mm -hmm. tabletop sim i may be on all those on those other things but mm -hmm. a lot of people do play uh, on octagon which has got all the cards and of course i would encourage you to support the designers and you know, and the and and fantasy flight. For yeah, me, buy it. Well, if you buy like it, buy you're it. Play it on that, but mm -hmm. but a lot of people do play it that way with a pretty good success. Um, it really is incredible. You can actually go on YouTube. I'll recommend, uh, you know, uh, 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 C Stan and Three's Company, Mr. Underhill. Those are some channel, some of that you can mm -hmm. just watch them and you can see their the way that uh, uh, that system is beautifully done. That's a very very uh, good uh, digital implementation. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to mention that there is a digital version of Lord of the Rings, which is completely separate. So there is a uh, different game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. a digital card game. And it's uh, Fantasy Flight put it out. Uh, and that's people thought maybe it was a digital imp implementation of this card game, but it is actually not. Okay. It's a completely own. It's Why a completely own thing. Because a lot of people do confuse that. Okay. They think that it is the same thing. So, so there was the card game, 
-hmm. which fans have put onto Octagon, uh, O-C-T-G-N. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a completely separate thing called, uh, which is like a digital version of a, of a card game of Lord of the Rings. It uses the same art, uh -huh. uh, a lot, you know, so there is a lot of uh, uh, area to be confused there. But we're going to just concentrate on the game itself mm -hmm. here, the card, the physical tactile game itself. Okay, so... The game mm -hmm. exists in uh, nine cycles. So the game comes out in cycles. There are nine of them, just like the nine walkers, okay? What okay. Which is if you're into Lord of the Rings, which I hope you would be if you're interested in this. Um, and each cycle consists of a deluxe box, which has three quests, okay? And then followed by six scenario packs, mm -hmm. okay? Or quests, okay? Similar to Arkham. Similar to both Major cycles and then little mm -hmm. things, yeah. okay. So you're going to get three quests inside of a deluxe box. You're going to get player cards. And then you're going to get each new pack that comes out will have a new hero, player cards, and a new quest. Now, very important, each of these deluxe boxes is needed to play the six packs that follow. Right. Okay, so you if you sh if you're going to buy, just you're just going to go out of the blue and start buying things, mm -hmm. it would be better for you to buy... Uh, one, you know, a deluxe, and then the packs mm -hmm. that go along with that deluxe. Okay. Should mm -hmm. as might be jumping ahead. Should you buy these cycles in order? So that's going to be something we'll co okay. cover. Okay. Um, the game is out of print, so I think buying collections or buying just what fantasy flight because you're going to be hunting down a lot of these packs. Okay. And things. But I will talk about how you would play through okay. in a bit. Okay. Um, so the game itself, uh, again, so you have your nine. Uh, Deluxes. Well, you have the core box, six packs, and then you have a deluxe box, six packs, deluxe okay. box, six packs. Uh -huh. And that goes on, and there's nine full cycles. Mm -hmm. You also have uh, a number of scenarios that were released for that are standalone. You don't need anything else. Uh -huh. You know, you just have that standalone. They do not come with any player cards. They're just a pack on its own. Base box lets you play two players? Or do you need yeah. each the core need a base box. box? So that's a whole other rabbit hole uh, mm -hmm. that I don't really want to get too far into, but I'm glad you brought that up. The core set... You need to play the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. It has heroes and player cards and things, and it has the tokens and things that you would need to play the game. But at that point in its business model, Fantasy Flight kind of forced you to buy multiples of it mm -hmm. in order to get a full complement of some of the player cards that are very useful. Mm -hmm. So you could buy three three core boxes just to get complete sets of those cards, which is insanely wasteful, and okay. it's a whole other yeah, conversation. That's upsetting. But you really don't need to do that. You can okay. just buy the one and... Two people could okay. play it. Absolutely. If they just if they were just curious, you and a friend, yes. you could buy it. It's cooperative, we should say that. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Well I said we were gonna review the game really. This right. is more like Okay. So then you so you have those nine cycles, mm -hmm. complete cycles. Uh and with deluxe, six packs, deluxe, six packs. And then you have the saga expansions, which are based on the stories, the books and the movies. Mm -hmm. So there are two Hobbit box sets, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and then there are, uh, so there's three and three, so there's six total quests. And then for the Lord of the Rings, there's two boxes for the Fellowship, two boxes for the uh, 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 the two towers, and then two boxes for the Return of the King. Hmm. Two big boxes? Just regular deluxe oh. boxes, okay? Deluxe and those boxes. will each have uh -huh. three quests, every one of them. So, uh -huh. so there's, and they include a campaign. So you can play through a campaign, and they will have player cards. Okay. Uh, every, every pack, everything has a player card except for the standalone. Fantasy play stuff, which I think you interrupted me there. So just to finish that other thing, there are maybe 20 quests that are standalone that are generally pretty difficult. They're, the difficulty curve is way through the roof on those. So there's a much, much harder challenges, and they were released for Gen Con or for Fellowship uh, events, which is another type uh, of event okay. that they would do. And um, you can buy them on eBay and stuff, and they have like special... Fantasy Flight does sell them on their website as well, but they're like a different quality. They have a, they're have they not the normal quality you would find. Huh, okay. It's like they have a weird... Like, like convention specials or special event things. That's okay. great. Huh? Okay, so, and then... So you have the, the sagas, you have the regular deluxes, which is the two main things. Then you have the, the extra little one-off scenarios, okay, which are in those scenario packs from Gen Con and... Uh, Fellowship, and then you also have something called nightmare packs, and these nightmare packs you can you must have the original pack. So if you want to play um, uh, uh, the drowned runes, okay, oh, then you would have to have if you want to play nightmare, you would have to have the deluxe box for that oh. scenario pack to play it on its own. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to play nightmare, you would buy the nightmare pack and add it to Which that. Which makes mix. it more difficult. It's a more difficult version of that. Yeah, this correct. is like in Arkham when they had the, retur the return, return to. Return to. Okay. okay. And so that pretty much encompasses like all of the stuff that you That's could buy. The world is, of Lord of the Rings, the card game. That is correct. Now there is one, one, one more just weird oddball thing. They had a collector's edition which had two quests and had a couple pre-constructed decks 
in it, but that's not a regularly available item, um, but you can't find that on eBay and stuff. And actually, if you could get uh, a version of that, it's kind of a nice thing to be able to, uh, to you know, I thought you and I might try to play that on the channel uh -huh. because it, it has a couple of set decks and it's a nice way to kind of dip your toe in as, mm -hmm. as well. And then those cards are, are, will be useful and those quests will be useful to play uh, in general. Okay, so now, that's... Mm -hmm. Quick question. Absolutely. This is like... When we play Arkham, the living card games, there are scenarios that you like play once and you're done. Yeah, you so probably we'll, wouldn't play it again. Is yeah, that? We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, actually, okay. you can ask me your, your first question. <laughs> <we got there. laughs> the question that I was assigned. Okay, well, this is a real question that I have because mm -hmm. I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings fan. If you don't like, or if you aren't totally enthralled with mm -hmm. the theme, mm -hmm. is this still a game that would be good for you? So I would say no. And really? that might be okay. So I should preface this by saying, obviously, all this. So what I told you is how the model is and, and how it exists in the game. That's not; those are just like facts, they're not opinions, right? Mm -hmm. So going forward, I'm going to try to explain to you, and 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 I'm going to try to be, you know, uh, try to give the other points of view. But I'm going to try to explain to you what I think you should do in mm -hmm. the best way that you should do it. And of course, these are going to be all my opinions. Mm -hmm. So could you enjoy the game just for the mechan mechanisms mm -hmm. in the game? Of course, of course. But I would say if you're not a fan of Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. because some of the greatest things in this game are the thematic elements mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the characters and in terms of the artwork, which is gorgeous, mm -hmm. okay, and the scenarios and things of this nature, all of this stuff really supports that theme. Um, and the reason that I would say that you should not play this game or you should not dive into this game mm -hmm. because of the, uh, if you aren't a fan of the theme, is because... Um, because it is out of print and it's hard to find packs and it's such an expansive game and stuff, I would say because there are the two, two sister games. Um, there's uh, there's Lord of the Rings Living Card Game, mm -hmm. which is a cooperative card game, and Marvel. There's Marvel Champions, which mm -hmm. is behind me there, which is uh, a, another cooperative uh, Living Card Game I fantasy mm -hmm. play. And then the same thing, Arkham Horror, mm -hmm. another. Fan, and, they, and they all share the same designing pool. Like the people that work right. on some have gone to do the others, and so you're going to find a large amount of similarities there. So if and one so, of those themes really grabs you, then that yeah, may be the but, game to play. But there's really just more on a practical sense. There's mm -hmm. two things on the practical sense, okay? And number one is the fact that uh, availability. So Fantasy Flight is really supporting and pushing Arkham Horror, the card game, and it's really supporting and pushing Marvel Champions. Mm -hmm. And while Right now, we are seeing some reprints from the Lord of the Rings stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a game that they have a fulfillment for, and, and at any time they could just stop. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to find packs and things, and stuff comes out and it instantly gets grabbed up. And mm -hmm. so it's hard to. Um, it's just if you're not gonna if you're not into the theme, then why not just get one of those games that's being has a full has a fuller support system? But is the theme like if you play it, might you get? Like, sure, you can understand that. I'm just saying you're going to lose a lot of it. You're going to lose a lot of what makes the game special, I think. Uh -huh, you know? okay. I mean, it's... it's so that, Like, that's if you opinion. don't know this person from this part no, of the story, you're not going to sure, care. Not it's gonna not going to give you that. The card, the game is not going to give you that much right, I'm just of the telling story. you that you're going to get a lot of that, out of, a lot more out of yeah, those characters sure, in those instances. Sure. Now, uh, the second reason I would say is because, you know, over this course of its design life, you know, I mean, this game was a revolutionary game. Nobody had ever played anything like this before. Nobody ever designed anything like this before. And because of that, the game, in the beginning, you know, the quests are not designed as well. Uh -huh, and as you go along, they've learned, and they've tweaked, and they've made the game better. Yeah, so as you look at the game, it gets better and better and better, and, and, and the... And the scope, I mean, it's just, and those, and the, the games that came after Arkham Horror and uh, Marvel Champions, they're, it's like they're they standing on the shoulders yeah, of that game. Sure. And so, for that reason, too, if they're cleaner, they're cleaner systems, there's not some of those extraneous problems, not a lot of FAQ yet. I'm sure those games will get to that, but and they have some, but I'm saying, like, in general, those games are now, have now, you know, have benefited from the design of Lord of the Rings. That makes sense. So, um, so yeah, so that's, uh, I would I would say that you know, and now if you're thinking like well which I, I'll briefly say you know for me like uh, Arkham definitely obviously my favorite is Lord of the Rings out of the three uh, Marvel Champions uh, I find to be um, is much simpler but also provides a lot of interesting choices um, it's my second favorite out of that system and then Arkham I think is amazing but it's a lot significant has a significant level of randomness above the other and two. And very, the replayability is gone yeah, down so, the toilet. So it, it leans into the campaign aspect. So for Lord of the Rings, I'll play a quest 
20 times and mm -hmm. then move on to another one and I can bop, bounce around. Arkham really uh, is significantly is kind of like play through this nine packs, these nine scenarios as a story. So it's putting mm -hmm. more of its baggage in the story element. Also, like, you're getting, you know, all three games are like an encounter deck is dealing you off something random. You're drawing things that are random. But in Arkham, uh, there is an additional level of randomness that you can draw from your own deck, something bad, and then you're not only getting a a card that's not helping you, you're getting a card that's punishing you, as well as the fact that you have to do these tests, so uh, you can always, you, you may always fail something. So if you've tried some of those games uh, and you have some experience there, that hopefully that will help you to understand whether you'd want to play that or not. So again, the story, if you like the story aspect the best, I mean, Ar Arkham's got it in spades, it's mm -hmm. incredible, and I do think it's an incredibly well done mm -hmm. design game, but it's, it's it has more randomness. Uh, Marvel Champions is a little simpler, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's made to be more approachable, but it still has a lot of interesting choices and stuff. And of course, I think Lord of the Rings is the, the best. But if you have a strong inkling towards any of those themes, I would gravitate towards that. And especially since the other two games are going to be much easier to, to acquire. Uh-huh. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. How about... Uh... Not that I've pre-planned these questions, Jesse, mm -hmm. but would you have another question for me? Uh, well, I do have a question about um, deck building in these mm -hmm. games. Like, we've talked about, I have a limited tolerance for deck building, and some of these games really require you. So let's say you're not a huge fan. Not a huge fan. I, I'm, I don't even know if deck building's the right term. It, it's yeah, like you're... off pre-game deck construction, so, rather than deck building in a game like Dominion or whatever. Yeah, so if so... you don't like that kind of thing, mm -hmm. if you're not ready to commit months of your life to learning mm -hmm. and reading up on what's mm -hmm. good to build, is this still... Yeah, so, fun. so in a game like Dominion, you're building your deck, that's the game itself. You're building your deck as the game is going along. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord of the Rings, much like a game like Magic the Gathering, some things like that, are games where you're going to make a deck outside of the game, and then you're going to go and play it. Now, I didn't, I'm not going to list a ton of resources here, but I will say RingsDB exists, mm -hmm. um, which is a site you can look at if you don't want to build a deck. But I will say, um, I'm going to answer this in two ways. One okay. way I would be inclined to say I don't think it's a good game for people that don't like to... to and this might be controversial. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this. If somebody said, well, look, I don't like social deduction games, you know, should I play Werewolf? I would say no. I mean, mm -hmm. why you don't like that style of game? It's funny to say, I don't like watching movies, should I watch this movie? It's like, well, I mean, you know, it doesn't really make any sense to me. Like, mm -hmm. the game is about building a deck and taking it through these scenarios. So... It, it seems absurd to me that you would buy a deck building game if you didn't want to build a deck. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't compute uh -huh. to me, right? But, uh, that, but that brings me to my second point, which is the fact that you do have a site like Rings to Be uh, that will that people have built. There's thousands and thousands of decks. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's like 10,000 decks, I think, on there or something like that. Um, where people will have built a deck for you. Right. But, so you could take a deck, pre-constructed deck, you know, from the internet that looks interesting or people have voted on a lot or whatever. And you mm -hmm. could just take that deck and play through mm -hmm. the scenarios. Mm -hmm. And I do think that you could have a lot of fun with that. But I well, will say... Yeah. Sorry, did you want to... I did want to uh, st interject something. So I used the Arkham version of this, Arkham mm -hmm. DB, when you played it. And I really kind of enjoyed it because mm -hmm. on the site people are mm -hmm. like, here's the deck I've constructed, here's what I'm going for, here's the kind of thing it... it focuses on and it's kind of fun to have this library of all these different things and you mm -hmm. find one that seems cool to you but one of the problems with using that in Arkham is you're only playing the campaign once you don't like you, you can't just experiment and be like oh mm -hmm. let me try something let me try a different one but from my discussions with you about you Lord of the Rings you replay these things a and lot. you try them and there's ways you're going to talk about the ways you can sort of customize they added something to the system that lets you like replay a mission, but with goals or something. Oh, so it no. does. Doesn't it sound like well, I'll you say could this, replay like, missions, scenarios yeah, in Lord of the Rings decks. and try different decks? And Absolutely. Yeah. So one thing I will say though is that, and this is why I don't think it's like the thing to do. Because if you are gonna take a deck off Rings DB, I mean, and you, and again, you can, you could enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, you as you say, you did enjoy that. But I, I think that like fun doing that. It. It's strange though because if you play just a deck you've gotten offline, you have to understand why those cards are in there and how mm -hmm. they're interacting together. And that in itself is the under understanding the idea of deck sure. building. And also when you're playing a quest or something, you're going to say, look, this, I'm losing this quest over and over and over with this deck. 
what cards are not working in there and how do I switch them out to find some cards that I will need to deal with these specific yeah, threats. Yeah, well, that's the cool thing and you've so, told me about. When you tell me about playing these mm -hmm. scenarios and playing them several times until mm -hmm. you figure out how to beat it, that's the one thing that sort of feels like it might scratch an itch mm -hmm. that Arkham can't scratch because of the one-time playthroughs. Yeah. And that's the only Again, part you that you... you can play them more than once, but it's a pain to... Yeah, but to, that's the only thing you when you... you occasionally, you tell me about the Lord of the Rings yeah. experience and how you're like... Yeah having to figure out how to beat a specific mm -hmm. thing by constructing a specific deck. Occasionally I get a little like curious about that yeah, and I, wanting to try that. Yeah, I mean, I think that like, you know, you have to understand why those cards are interacting together and what you should switch and when you should play them. It's a basic understanding of how the game functions. And if you don't like the deck building aspect of that, I think you are, you're setting a challenge up for yourself that you're not going to enjoy. So Does the I, game like play itself once you do that? Like after no, you've brought a constructed no. deck, there's still no, there's lots a, of strategy yeah, there's involved. Some people that have, that have, uh, there's, there's some people that have made specific decks to beat, like that say this, this deck will beat every quest there mm -hmm. is, or most quests or whatever. Mm -hmm. And people will try it and they'll get just demolished with it because they don't understand how, how to make those decisions and things because okay. they don't understand uh -huh. part of the game. It's almost like two so, games with these yeah. games. One is building the deck. Morning. You want me to ask my yeah, next I want question? You to my <laughs> uh, okay, well, <laughs> you alluded to this. Here's the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the answer to it, mm -hmm. but but uh, for the solo gamer, yeah. this is this seems like a good. One game. of the most common questions I see is, can this game be played solo? Boy, can it! Boy, it absolutely can. So some people say like it's too punishing. How can so I myself started the game and then I set it aside because it, the third quest in the core box is very, very difficult to do solo. Okay. Especially with that card pull at do that time. Do you play with two so I'll, I'll, yep, okay. so I'll say that. So the players will play two what they say two fisted, they'll just they'll control two decks. And mm -hmm. so that does take a lot more mental bandwidth to do, but it is a very popular way to do it. But a lot of people want to know, can they play true solo? Meaning, true solo. Meaning Good. I'm just playing me as a player versus the quest. One character. And the answer is and a resounding yes. I played thousands of games this way. It is absolutely enjoyable and absolutely possible. So, people will say, it doesn't seem like this quest is possible, or you know, but the the fact of the matter is, it is absolutely that way. And the fact is, there's maybe uh, so there's I don't know something like 120 quests now. I should have looked that number up before. Maybe 120, maybe 130 quests that you can play. And I would say there are maybe five quests. That are can't. really uh -huh. challenging solo. But on the other hand, there's like probably five quests that you could never play four player because you get destroyed. Uh -huh. Do so, you always play it just one handed? Uh, I have played some. I mean, this is unusual because we've talked about this, and Greg and mm -hmm. I have one. This is one of our areas where we sort of disagree with some games. Mm -hmm. We Greg likes to play them yeah. controlling two characters each person. So it's really strange to me. That this is so important yeah. to you that you be able to play it only one handed. Why? Well, because is I that? want my I want my full I want the, it's you're running the game you're running your deck, I want the least bandwidth possible. So are you saying this is one of these games that really benefits from not having to split your bandwidth? Well, into you two definitely characters? could, and and I do some every now and again. I've started two more because there's I've gone back and there's some characters and some uh, some deck aspects in the card pool that I want to get more out of and I want to try more. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm realizing that like I have to like. I have to play two player two handed mm -hmm. if I want to do that. Of course, I know the game and the quest so well that it's much easier to do so now as mm -hmm. well. So that's another thing to consider. But I have noticed that people ask this quite a lot. So again, like playing, excuse me, playing four players. There's probably five out of the 130 quests that are impossible, okay. or not impossible, but like exceedingly difficult. And it's the same way for for solo. So yes, some quests will be harder or easier depending on that. But in general. You know, like 125 out of 130 quests or whatever it is, you're gonna you're gonna be able to beat it solo. And it's very satisfying. Obviously, you've played thousands of games. You yeah, really of like course, it. It's yes. a puzzle. It's a fun puzzle. One other thing I've noticed on the forums, uh, mm -hmm. and again, it, you, people can play it any way they want to play. I mean, if you enjoy doing something a certain way, mm -hmm. have at it. That's your own personal choice. Mm -hmm. But I have noticed because there's been a, quite a bit of people that go on the forums and things, and they say, "Here's my solo variant," and they're, the idea of a lot of this is that like. They, they change don't... the rules? You mean their house rules? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, when I read them, when I look at these, I see people that say, they're like, well, so, uh, to make the game beatable and solo or possible and solo, and they do, they, they give some edges. Mm -hmm. And again, 
that's the way you want to play. That's totally fine with me. Mm -hmm. But when I look at these, I think, wow. It's really not totally fine with me. <laughs> well, I mean, you, people can do whatever they want, but I would not play that. Way. Right. So when I look at that, those when I look at those parameters that they're like, do this, this is some like I look at, it, I'm like, oh my god, how could you lose by mm -hmm. doing that, right? And I don't mean to 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 be. You know, it sucks if you lose a game a lot, and then you're like, why did that person said it was easy, right? Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's just like, when you look at the the towering amount of stuff that they'll do for you, it's mm -hmm. like, now, when I look at the game, when a card comes out, and like, if you're looking on with a community, I'm like, okay, that card is over-costed by one, or it's really good because it's under-costed by one, or it does this, this, and this. I analyze it, and I'm like, well, that's a good card because of this, or it's a bad card because of that, right? And it's so funny that like, it's such a knife edge that the design is made on. Mm -hmm. Like where like a card will be really good or really bad because it has one line of text mm -hmm. or one, you know, one restriction too many or one, you know. Do they errata stuff? Uh, they do, after yeah, I don't want to get into that oh, whole okay. rabbit hole if that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. But like, so when I look at that, like there's, for instance, there's a card that like, uh, it's like called a side quest and you put it in and it gives all the enemies minus one attack. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, I mean, the enemies can have, most enemies have three attack, there's a few with two, and then, like, you know, sometimes there's four, five, six attack. Generally, that's, you know, but when you, but most, and almost all the enemies are generally three attack, and when you take one attack away from that, you realize, like, how insanely, like, much easier, and, you know, it's not, it's just that one thing, and you realize how good that design is just based on that one tiny uh -huh. little instant, right? And so... And there's a number of things like that in the game where, like, it's just a knife edge of, like, wow, that really changes the game, that one little thing. And so, these solo variants, again, if that's what you want to do, that's cool. But, like, it's just, I mean, the game is beatable solo, and it really, the design is, is really dialed in so well that, like, giving your heroes extra resources every round or whatever is just, to me, it's like, you really throw the, mm -hmm. throwing the game out the window in, in some ways. So, um, yeah, so, again, like... Like, just, if you're losing, mm -hmm. reach out to people in the community and say, what am I mm -hmm. doing wrong? Or what what card am I not, is there a card I can use? Or is there some, mm -hmm. some strategy I should take with this particular quest? Or, you know, or watch a few uh, of those uh, YouTube videos of people playing that quest or some quests like them and say, oh, wow, I didn't realize you can kind of do that. Or, mm -hmm. You can learn a little more. I mean, that's one reason that the lifestyle game really makes, uh, mm -hmm. makes it a, a more enjoyable is that you can develop that skill, right, and, and find more enjoyment in that. It's a game that rewards the deeper you go into it and Absolutely. learning and studying Absolutely. the decks and yeah. thinking about it, the more you're going to learn. Okay, now the question that I'm most interested mm -hmm. in is if you were sort of new getting into this, mm -hmm. is there an order you should play the scenarios? Mm -hmm. Where should someone start? If someone's, if someone's watching this, they're like, this sounds mm -hmm. like it could be for me. Where would they start? Yeah. Can they, should they have to start at the beginning mm -hmm. and work through? Because you said the beginning scenarios yeah, were not yeah, designed that well. Well, okay, so, so I played this I'll, when it first came out. I mm -hmm. played this with my friend Zach. We played mm -hmm. one scenario, and we were like, mm. <laughs> "Well, so the game." A lot of people approach the game in one of two ways. They're going to approach it in like, "I'm just going to kind of play whatever quest I want," and then there's people that are going to do the saga, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like a very popular way to go through the story, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, so, for me personally. Uh, Number one, like at this point, if you've gotten a whole collection and you have everything and it doesn't matter, I'll give an answer for that. Otherwise, okay. I would say maybe you should get uh, just what, you know, try to get complete cycles if you can and mm -hmm. play through like a cycle in that way. Mm -hmm. But I'll t say the, be the what I believe is the best way to do it. Okay. I'm going to tell you a few reasons why I think. I think okay. you should play in what I call progression style. That's what I think is the best way to play it. Okay. And what basically that means is you just play the game in the order that it came out. Which, mm -hmm. you know, so you go through the first quest to come out earlier. And the reasons I would say that is if it's for a couple of reasons, things. Number one, uh, as the card pool increases and you get access to more and more cards, uh, you are growing in power. You're, you're going to access just the fact that you have answers to questions means that, like, you're going to get. And, the, and there is a slight power curve, you know, mm -hmm. cards that come out later, maybe, but they do a really good design, di uh, a really good job in this game of not having, like, that power creep. Mm -hmm. But there is just an inherent power group and having more options. Mm -hmm. So the first couple cycles, or as the game goes along, the cycles are getting easier and easier and easier. And I would say the first four cycles are, well, first three cycles are, are fairly fairly easy now. And and there are going to be people that are going to be like, that's crazy, the Arizona Numenor is insanely difficult. And it was at the time. But now 
like I had to play that like this one box some of those scenarios like 40 times to beat them they were so mm -hmm. hard and now they're just enjoyable and they're mm -hmm. not I'm probably going to win Mm -hmm. Almost certainly going to win another, but they're just but they're enjoyable. Well, you should just start at the beginning. One, start at the base mm -hmm. box. So cycle one and cycle out. two mm -hmm. are very easy now. Like I find mm -hmm. them to be. I mean, th you could get one random. Some of the treacheries are really brutal in that opening couple of cycles, and you could lose like that from some stupid treachery. But mostly those earlier quests are very fairly easy, I think. And I'll, so there is a natural curve in the game of like mm -hmm. things getting more difficult. Um, so sorry. Go ahead. I just want, like, uh, this is completely uninformed opinion, but from my experience with these deck building games, mm -hmm. this would be a dangerous thing for someone. There are people like me who tend to, like, buy things, like, you buy, mm -hmm. you buy all the expansions. I could easily see buying a collection and being, like, totally overwhelmed and being yes. like, well, I cannot build a deck with a thousand job. cards. I just, and, like, mm -hmm. just feeling totally overloaded. Yeah. So when I, I like the idea of starting yeah. with the base and only using the base or the first couple packs to build so, your deck so what i would i would suggest this is the way i did it and so i would this is obviously of course what i would suggest i think it worked out very well for me mm -hmm. and you can alter this or not use it or whatever but what i would do is i would say okay the first cycle is called the Merkwood cycle i would just take all the cards from the Merkwood cycle mm -hmm. okay and i would say these are my cards to make decks out of and then i would go through that cycle and when i finished the cycle and i was done with it mm -hmm. i would say okay now i'm going to access the cards to the Dwarf Elf cycle. I'm gonna yeah. add those into my card pool. You know, I sat there and like sat on the couch and like you know looked through. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's so cool. And like mm -hmm. looked at all the new cards and heroes and stuff. And then I made some decks and things. And then I went through the uh, mm -hmm. through the yeah. Dwarf cycle. And then on and on and on and on. And each time, act I'm getting an influx of cards to make mm -hmm. it more interesting for me. Mm -hmm. But it's not overwhelming me, right? And I'm going in a, and and then also the cards coming out are not. The, those are the cards that existed at that time, mm -hmm. so they're not overpowered, and you're kind of getting to play the game at that power level. Because I don't think, I think you're not going to really enjoy those earlier quests. Okay, you're going to play them, and, mm -hmm. and that's the time to play them, because the later quests are going to get more, better and better and better and better. better. So keep so, that in mind. If you yeah. come into this, and they're not like, you like it, but they're not thrilling you, they get better. Yeah. So, I mean, it is, like, if you're planning on playing the whole game, mm -hmm. then start at the beginning and play those earlier quests. Because you're, going back to them is not as much fun. I will also say that the, 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 the two best cycles, in my opinion, uh, number one, the best cycle to me is the Dream Chaser cycle, okay. but it's, it's, it's way more complicated. You're sailing around and stuff, and it's like, it is the best cycle, but you should never start there, right? because that cycle is much more complicated, and you're, it's like you should get the rest of the game under your belt first, and I know like a lot of times you're like, oh, this expansion comes out for this game, sure, throw it right in. No, sometimes you should... Yeah, don't do that. I mean, because it, it is a very complicated game. I will also but you'll know, if you play the first cycle, and mm -hmm. you're not enjoying it at all, it's not going to change not, it's after you get off. I would also say the last cycle, the mm -hmm. ninth cycle, is, is phenomenal, but it's also really designed with lifelong players in mind. I mean, they mm -hmm. are definitely playable in other senses, but it really is and you'll kind of, like it's it's made to kind of be for like the discerning lord of the, I don't know how else to say it, but like like it's really oh, a it's reward like a for game. I mean, it is this is uh, you tend to play games solo mm -hmm. and I don't, but like I I envy that you've got this game. Mm -hmm. it, it occupies a very special mm -hmm. place for you that you can, you've played it and enjoy mm -hmm. it so much, so yeah. many times. So if so, you're looking for, if you've yeah. got like a hole in your life yeah. to fill, yeah. this yeah. might be the game for you. It really is. So, so the other approach is to play Saga, right? And that's a little trickier because, um, you know, you could just play through and access the Saga cards mm -hmm. and, then, and then play progression in that way. What is um, Saga? So Saga, you're just playing through the story of the Lord of the Rings. I see. Okay. And it's, what, it came out like in the middle of the... Yeah, so, the but they, they dripped and drabbed. So like, as, so like, you know, they just, you know, they've come along periodically through I see, the series. Okay. And so it's kind of hard to play, right? So like, if you were to play it, of course, the, the, the you can access the player cards there and stuff. But in terms of like not being overwhelmed... Mm -hmm. A lot of people do like to just play through the saga and access those cards as you go or whatever. And I, I, th I think that's fine too, but I feel like you may miss some of those cards that are in the greater set. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other way to do it, of course, is just to go on like Reigns to Be or just look through everything and make your own decks or whatever. But I just, that feels so overwhelming Is saga the campaign? Yeah, or is saga it, is the campaign. Or is there a different Well, campaign? you can play the non-campaign as well. And for me personally, the way I did it, mm -hmm. and it's not for everyone, right? But I, what I did was I played... 
I when I knew like the Black Riders expansion came out in, during like my regular progression playthrough, I would play that. And I wouldn't play a campaign. You don't have to. You can just play those okay. uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. And so I played them. And then when I was finished with all the cycles, mm -hmm. right, I went back and played a full campaign using the campaign rules. Got it. So that's the way I did it. And, 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 and certainly people might want those surprises from this campaign and stuff. They might want to play through that. They're wonderfully thematic if you like the movies. Um, or the books, enjoy the movies or the books, then you will enjoy... So it's a campaign with a story and mm -hmm. elements that pull over, like you, you yes, build correct. your deck? Yeah. Huh? So yeah. it's it's not a strong... Like, it's like, there are cards that you can access, like, that will, you know, that will continue, but it's not it's not like a campaign in the sense of, like, you're not going to... It's not going to change nearly as much as many other games. You're right. going to get... Not, maybe, it's not like maybe a every, super mm -hmm. narrative campaign yeah. that's going to, like, completely yeah, there are knock some, you off your feet. Yeah, there are some narrative elements to it but they're in the scheme of things they're they're not uh, a huge amount so mm -hmm. but um another way to do it i would say is to play through in progression and then play the just play the full saga when you're done as well mm -hmm. that could be fun as well um again uh uh one thing about nice nice about the nightmare packs though is that you know you could play through in progression or whatever and then those earlier quests or back to... you can add the yeah, nightmare packs in earlier cycles i will say are can be a little swingier as the game goes along the as i've said the game becomes tighter and tighter more consistent the designers got better yeah, the right. difficulty is still there but they but it's it's less like oh i just drew a card that just really wrecked my state mm -hmm. um it's the the deck is just more consistent you know which makes it a better experience i i think mm -hmm. so i'm just going to run through in case like somebody says look i just want to buy a, one cycle and play uh -huh. and see what i think uh -huh. i'm going to run through but you just, your bottom line is they should start from the start. Is your recommendation? That's, that's my uh -huh. recommendation. Mm -hmm. But I mean, again, you know, availability. I mean, everybody's got a different opinion. That's fine. I'm just kind of giving mm -hmm. my, my well, The base box is going to be the one that's going to be easiest to get a hold of, I would think. Well, you have to so get the court set anyway because you need those. Right, you need right, the trackers right. and stuff in there. Okay, so I'm going to bust through the nine mm -hmm. cycles uh, real quick, and I'm going to give my opinions on, you know. Okay, uh, okay. Shadows and Rookwood cycle. That's the first cycle. If you don't plan on playing at all, I wouldn't play it. I wouldn't get chase those down, and mm -hmm. this is purely from the scenarios and stuff, mm -hmm. not from the player cards because they're all over. The okay, Dwarf Dwarf Elf cycle is enjoyable. It's got some cool quests in there. Um, it's earlier in the card pool. There are some more pow some powerful cards in that set, uh, but uh, uh, it's it can lead to a little more of an inconsistent experience. But I do really enjoy that cycle. Against the Shadow, I actually think is a fantastic cycle. However. There are some brutal quests in there that are like really hard. If you don't have a full card, card pool, you're gonna find them to be very challenging. They're legendary for their difficulty. The the the, the deluxe box, which is called Heirs of Numenor, is kind of legendary in that way. But the cycle overall is a very good cycle. Uh, it's got some good cards in there, and it's a very um, using the full card pool. There, I find them just to be enjoyable, not soul crushing. The Ringmaker cycle. Is one that I would avoid as a new player uh, if you're just going to go into one because there's a lot of triggers. There's these things called time counters, and they're popping up things all the time, and it's a lot to keep track of, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not good for a new player. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one, the Angmar Angmar Awaken cycle, is one of my favorites. It's incredible, and I actually think it's like it's a good like. There's nothing too crazy going on where like you couldn't enjoy it. Some of my favorite quests are in that cycle. There are some pretty brutal quests in there, but I think it's a really good, well-rounded, well-designed enjoyable cycle and if you're only just going to get a cycle and you don't care about like the progression style mm -hmm. whatever i would recommend that as being a very good place to start okay. the dream chaser cycle is my favorite cycle but i would not start there because it includes a sailing mechanic or sailing around and stuff and there's like people boarding your ship and stuff and uh it's a whole lot more layers on the game so if you play a lot of it or you apply some other cycles definitely look forward to trying that one because it's the best one but i, I in my opinion but uh, I do think uh, it has an added level of complexity that I don't think a new player will enjoy. So it'll have the adverse effect. Uh, then you've got the Haradrin cycle. I think that's a great cycle. It's a great starting point. Probably easier to find packs maybe in that one. Um, it's uh, There's not too much crazy stuff going on where you can't follow it. So I think the Haradrin cycle is a very good cycle to play the scenarios. However, uh, the player cards tend to be in that cycle are more of like sprinkled for different archetypes of decks in there so there's not like you're if you buy that just only that cycle you're not gonna get like uh -huh. an archetype like for instance um 
the Dunedain archetype is in the Angmar and Waken cycle, so you'll probably have a lot of cards for that. Uh, the Dream Chase is going to have a lot of Noldor stuff. So, you know, you're not going to get a real strong so it's not player card in, set. You might, not, you might not consider it like a standalone thing that you could play and play mm -hmm. well with without cards from the other yes, sets. I say that, yes. uh -huh. So I probably wouldn't recommend that one for that reason, unless mm -hmm. you've got like, you know, a bigger card pool, you've mm -hmm. had some other cards from other sets. Um, the Arid Mithrin cycle is one of the best design cycles. There's not a lot of crazy stuff going on. There's some really interesting, unique, cool quests in there. It's one of the best cycles that has been in the game. And it's probably a lot easier to find since it's newer. So the Arid Mithrin cycles might be your best bet. I will also say that the deluxe box that comes with, uh, that you would buy to play the Arid Mithrin cycle, you could basically take the cards in that set and it's a whole archetype. It's the Dale archetype, which you may remember from the Hobbit uh, books or films. And they, they're one of the strongest factions in the game. So buying that cycle, you'll basically have a couple of deck archetypes that you can immediately take against any quest in the game and play through that whole cycle. So I, that would actually be my, okay. my number one recommendation. Huh. And then the Vengeance of Mordor cycle is the last cycle, which is more f for seasoned players. Um, and so I would recommend, you know, like trying that later on because the mm -hmm. it's much more uh, 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 demanding. And then, of course, you could always just maybe make a plan uh, for you and a friend or a spouse or something to go through and, um, you know, just play those in order. Well, that that could be very enjoyable. That leads me to my the question that I've been wanting to ask. You played this solo so much that we it don't, doesn't even make sense for us mm -hmm. to play because we're on... Completely it, different, right. yeah. But... Um, would this be a game, this is co-op for two, would this be a game that would be good for, what What do you think about the player counts? Good for two people? I think good two, for four? two player is definitely the sweet spot. There's some mechanics in mecha Better than solo? Yeah, mecha there's mechanisms in the game that are only used in a, in a multiplayer game. So I think two player is definitely the best way to play. We've talked about, like, these lifestyle games. If you had a friend, a good friend, mm -hmm. or a partner, a life partner, yes. and you both, found these enjoyable. Wow, Forget this it. would be an amazing it's part the, of your life. Yeah, you could just, oh, we beat, we lost that quest. I was thinking I might take this hero and this hero, and I might take use this, use this you card. You could have discussions well. over dinner, like building decks. The, the richness of Incredible. these games, yeah. if they hit that sweet spot for you, yes. would be amazing. Yeah, you almost, I mean, I, you know, you I just got have out discussions, of, walking I got out discussions, walking discussions about. I had um, moved 900 miles away, and I just, I, had, I had got out of board game because I wasn't, didn't really have a, a, anybody to play with. And this completely replaced board game. I was obsessed watching reviews every day, going on board game geek all the time, playing, you know. And and this completely replaced that. It really sucked up all my time and energy. And it's one of those games, game, I, I, I've said it, but I, I just want to emphasize it. It's one of those games that rewards the mm -hmm. discussing and thinking outside of the game. So it's one of those mm -hmm. things that you could have long, out, oh, right, hours long discussions about, like, what if we brought this mm -hmm. kind of deck? What if we tried yeah. this sort of yeah, combination you could, I mean, of you, you could say, I'm going to, and this actually leads into another thing, another question people ask oftentimes is, do I have to build a, a completely new deck for every quest? And the answer is no. There are some definitely some decks that are, or some quests that are very specialized that I would say the, the, the easier way to answer this to question is to say, like, if you made like nine or ten decks, you know, and you'd say, okay, cool, these are the decks that I usually like to play, these 10 decks that I made. And then you would say, look, I wouldn't play those three versus this quest because it's really punishing for mm -hmm. that, that strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, and, and there are some quests, there are a couple quests that really would help you to build specifically, and those are most of the ones in the Vengeance of Mortar, uh, the last cycle, that you really have to specialize. But there are some quests that, like, have the opportunity to say, look, if I build in this specific way for this specific quest, to beat it. So that's definitely there in some ways. Like, I think it's more of the type of thing where like, you'll play a quest and you'll be like, I keep losing to this, this, uh, these three I've things. I gotta build let something me, different. Let me, well, let me just take a few of these cards out and put a few different cards in, mm -hmm. in order to like, say, well, this, this thing is giving me a problem. So I'm going to put this card in my deck that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. So, uh, do you got any other questions for me? Um, that I yeah, wrote I mean, for you? just yeah, <laughs> this one's not on my list. But um, if you were considering getting mm -hmm. into this game, it can be an expensive habit, right? Yeah. These add up, and as you said, it's out of print now, so it's hard to buy things. Mm -hmm. things would be I I would say suggest, and you tell me if this is right or wrong. Like, don't do the thing where you buy everything. 
don't mm -hmm. don't buy huge amounts of this game. You're going to be overwhelmed, and it's going to be expensive well, to I do. Would disagree Maybe I would, buy, I would, I would say buy if you can a buy, beginning if you can, set, if buy you, a base set in one cycle, the first sure. cycle. Buy, buy a if you buy a cycle. Mm -hmm. If you're just going to be buying, but if you can get a collection or something from somebody getting out of the game. I mean, definitely that's the way, but I, I kind of think it's a weird thing because it's out of print. Mm -hmm. I feel like you got to, if you want it, you're going to have to buy it when you buy them up when you find them. It's a real, that's going to be a, something that each individual is oh, okay. going to have to yeah. uh, like look at their financial ability to do yeah, things. And but, then, I mean, as someone who tends to buy a bunch of stuff and hope that I like it, mm -hmm. this, the, these, these lifestyle games mm -hmm. are easy for new gamers to think they're going to love because they're people who really love them. Mm -hmm. And they may not be for you. I will also say, Get, right, if, you, try if it. you buy yourself a collection, you buy a lot of it, because mm -hmm. it's out of print and it is in demand, I don't think it'll be difficult for you to turn it over. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's, again, if you have the money to do so, you know, mm -hmm. that's, a whole, that's a whole other thing. Um, I should also mention uh, about difficulty levels. There are... Um, you know, there's a there's an easy mode that's included, which means you take out the gold rimmed cards. You take out some of the most punishing cards to mm -hmm. play it easier, and and you also start with an extra resource on each of your heroes. And then there's something that people do called sleazy mode. It's a, <laughs> sleazy yeah. mode. <laughs> and all that is is they just give themselves one extra resource at the start of the game for each of their heroes, just to give themselves a little bit of a mm -hmm. jump, a little bit of a bump. So people really uh, enjoy you know, can enjoy playing that way as well. Uh, you know, again, everybody's going to be different. So there is a nice level of like how to make it difficult, more easier or more difficult for yourself. Um, so I'd like to, uh, uh, do you have anything else there for me there, Jesse? No, I mean, every time we talk about Lord of the Rings, I get curious to try it. And from a design perspective, from a board game design, I love the idea that they've now had a series of these mm. games, Arkham and Marvel, whatever, and they're evolving the mm. system. I'm yeah. very curious about it. So I actually have like a list of things that I would have done differently, but it's more like if you're going to be insane about the game. Okay. So I'm going to do like kind of a little, yeah, let's little tie together everything, and then I'm going to list my things for people that okay. are interested in that. So I will say, like in general. This game can definitely occupy a lot of your time in an enjoyable way where you're coming up with what you want to do for decks and things. If you can find a friend that wants to play, even better. And that really goes from, for a lot of games, but there's a lot of room to play to just give yourself little funny, fun, fun or funny challenges, to try to do thematic things, to try to bring, you know, break a quest and, and like kind of like make a, you know, there's people that have designed decks that like do weird off the wall mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And so, like, I, you know, again, the game is incredible, and how if you choose to try it, I hope you do really, really enjoy it. And it is absolutely one hundred percent every de every every uh, every quest is winnable in solo. Every deck every quest is winnable without using some weird variant rule system. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to keep at it, and maybe reach out a little bit um, to some. Um, to some other resources. Um, I do want to make a plug for one that I always use, which is Hall of Bayarn, which is a card search. It's incredible. I really enjoy it. And if you use any of these services like RingsDB, Hall of Bayarn, or any of the wealth of um, blogs. Or and they're all podcasts blogs, on this blogs game. Blogs or podcasts. I would, I would also We know someone who made a podcast that you, uh, that about Lord of the Rings. Go and do their Patreon stuff. I did it very briefly. Um, I would, I would, uh, I would recommend that you, you know, go on their Patreons or whatever and throw them a few bucks if you if you find their service valuable. But that's up to you. Okay, so that's the general thing. I hope that answered people's questions in terms of like wanting to break into the game. Is it for you? Hopefully that answered the questions. Uh, if you comment on this, I'll, I'm not a very good timely person, but I'll try to do what I can to answer any questions on this thread. Um, also, there's a Discord. I should say that too for the mm -hmm. game, and people are really very helpful there. Uh, but I want to I want to go through some things that I would that I would do differently. Do differently, okay? Yeah, yeah let's. Hear. Okay, and they're all they're all pretty crazy. Okay, okay. well maybe not all of them. But number one, uh, knowing what I know. If I knew what I knew then, if I knew now what I knew then. If you knew then what you know. And now. I have considered doing this recently when I saw some deluxe boxes had become available again. I very much considered dropping three hundred to four hundred dollars to rebuy them to buy just the deluxes, and I'll tell you why. Because I played this game so much, I wish that I had bought like four copies of every deluxe so that I could take every individual quest and put the encounter sets from the deluxe boxes in each quest so they would be built and done. I would never have to pull out the cards and put them, I would just have all completed, uh, already pre-set up quests. So when you're setting up a quest, 
you'll look at the quest card and you'll say, I mm. need these different encounter sets. And you'll uh, pull those packs of cards and put them with yeah. the, the quest itself, shuffle them up and play. But I wish that I had bought enough deluxes so that I would just set them all up and would never have to do that. So I'm getting more game time and less setup time. Right. People That's hold. great if you uh, win the lottery. Yeah. That's so again, I did plan. list that as being as insane. It's probably thing. thousands of dollars. No, I think I figured it out. In order to get enough, it would be like four hundred dollars or something. Right. Like on that. top of the thousands. Oh, on of top dollars. of the money for the thing. But yeah. but granted, I mean, this is a game that I played for many many years, and I played like you know I would play 20, 20 quests some a week or something yeah. 20, 20 games a week or fifty games mm -hmm. a week depending on how you know whether I was off my season or not from mm -hmm. work. So I mean to me like yeah that would have been an easily easy mm -hmm. buy for me you know mm -hmm. so I mean people will spend sixty dollars on a video game and play for fifty hours. Mm -hmm. I mean so this is a pretty clear you know for me so that that's like if you if the sky's the limit for you mm -hmm. I mean that and you think you'll play it or you get into it and you think you're going to be playing this again mm -hmm. find the boxes okay. put them together yeah, you will uh, you will yeah, it's, and, and especially with nightmare because you have to pull all these cards out and add them back in and and it's it's a pain in the butt so it would be nice to just yeah have it those is a set pain up. these, like these types set, of games to set like arkham when we started in arkham it's like you gotta a, pull the sets out take a deep, deep breath yeah. i'm gonna have to set up this quest so in the earlier quests i, I i'm not i'm never gonna play them standard anymore because i'll just destroy them without you know they're not mm -hmm. as and i don't mean that like i'm so good i just mean like you know once you have a sense of the game and stuff mm -hmm. they're quite they can be quite easy so i would uh, i would i would urge that you know like that would be nice just to play. i would like to just only play those mm -hmm. nightmare style okay um the other thing i would say is uh i would organize them i would get some dividers uh i use rhino you've uh, got two giant you've yeah, got yeah, these so, custom so, boxes so i would get organized. i would get I use Rhino's dividers, and now I believe someone else is covering them in that Rhino style. Okay. But in it, whatever you do, I would just print out some dividers and organize all your quests. In, I mean, do, doesn't matter. Yours aren't organized. Mine are organized. Okay. But I'm saying, like, I'm just thinking of that now. That's a, think something I would do. That was Needle would, and Gray. That he were, could have brought these yes, beautiful so things to show you guys. Very nice screen. But he didn't boxes, think you it, cared. It's not that it just wasn't worth bringing them and endangering my my, my <laughs> baby. <laughs> so, but um, in any sense, I would I would definitely take a moment and organize your all the quest components, right? Like your your scenarios and your encounter sets. I would definitely organize those, and then I would either I would definitely organize like you, you know your cards by sphere and then by attachment event and allies uh, and heroes. But then I would uh, either. You can either binder them, which is useful. If you find mm -hmm. yourself deck building a lot, I mm -hmm. find that I don't like to put them away, so I prefer to keep them in a box. Mm -hmm. But either way, they're you know, sleeved. All your cards are sleeved. No, but that's a, that's a great thing to bring up because that was the next thing I was going to mention. Okay. Whether or not you should sleeve. Um, I've never sleeved my Lord of the Rings stuff. I played thousands of games. I've not had a problem. However, a lot of people do like to sleeve, but I would recommend maybe not sleeving your encounter sets. Because Just you know sleep. you don't use them as much, yeah. you know, and you mm -hmm. switched encounter sets, and of course it's a huge, <laughs> like mm -hmm. a massive expense. So right. maybe just sleeping your player cards if you do enjoy that, um, then that's fine too. But I don't personally, and I, I okay. you know, like uh, I haven't really had a problem, you know, at all. Mm -hmm. But again, it might be might be useful for some people. Another thing I would have done is to have uh, every time I started a new cycle, mm -hmm. to have a new mat like this. And I would have mm -hmm. done like when I went into the sands of the Haradrim cycle, I would have done like desert sands. Mm -hmm. And for the um, Dream Chaser, I would have done like um, an ocean type thing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's very silly, but I think just to add to that theme, when I was started the Dream Chaser cycle, I remember mm -hmm. I put on. Um, what about on my, the music? And on my uh, music, I put on YouTube, I would put on uh, like ocean waves and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, it can really uh, help you. Um, also, like, there's a great audio book uh, on YouTube that kind of uses the. The music and mm -hmm. the um, and the uh, uh, like they have different voices for the characters mm -hmm. and so kind of revisiting the books in that way can definitely enhance your enjoyment of playing the game and sort of inspire you to want to play a certain character or a certain archetype or something so that's very good well, there's a great idea for an app a phone that watches your game mm -hmm. and then you know dynamically generates the mm -hmm. music so the tension rises when mm -hmm. it should rise and fall mm-hmm all right, what else would you do? Um, and then I would just, uh, I mean, I've done this to some extent, but I would get i would get some dice and, like, use them for counting up certain stats and quest points and things like that because it's a lot easier than just putting tons and tons and piles of tokens on everything. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice to have, like, are there any apps? You know, red dice for the hit do points, you know damages. There, are, there at, are there helper apps for Lord of the Rings? Um, there are game? some. Uh, some people, they swear by them. Uh, I don't. I, I find I'm not a big mm -hmm. digital implementation type person. 
um, Cardboard of the Rings did it, and they, this is only for their backers, but they had a really cool little mat that, that you kept track of your willpower and the threat in the staging or uh -huh. something. And they have like a basically a counter mat, which actually seems pretty cool mm -hmm. um, and, and useful. But I find like the, using dice is, uh, is pretty convenient um, for, that, uh, for that part of it. Um, so these wires, uh, oh, and then a couple of just practical things that I would like to say in terms of your gameplay. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to play this game and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to want to throw it out the window and you're going to be angry. But there's a couple things to remember while you're, you're going to get frustrated because you can't beat a scenario. Yeah, some of the mm -hmm. scenarios. I mean, okay. I remember beating like, like losing more times than I care to count. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that Thanos thing. I've lost more than you could know. Mm -hmm. Um, so one thing is, is like, like, yeah, you're going to lose a lot. Just take a break. Not every deck can beat every scenario. So I'm guilty of this a lot. I'm like, I'm trying to beat this with these people, but mm -hmm. it's just not possible. Switch your deck, take a breather, try a new thing. Mm -hmm. The thing is people want to like, I remember like people would be like rushing through, I got to play the new quest, I got to get through these old quests. It's absurd to me, like enjoy mm -hmm. it. I remember one time I had a girlfriend that was back when Sopranos was coming out and I was like, oh, I really like the first season, I'm going to watch mm -hmm. the second season. And they plowed through the first season just to like be able to watch the second mm -hmm. season as it came out and it's mm -hmm. like, just enjoy it, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, there's like a whole life philosophy about this and I don't want to be like preachy or whatever, but I know like sometimes when I'm painting miniatures, I'm like, I got to get these done because I want to like, and it, I want to play with these paintings and it's, and it's a heinous experience. That sounds different. It's terrible. S enjoy painting the miniature or don't paint Good it. Good luck with that. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying in general, forcing yourself to go through. Well, painting. I agree with the first part where Take you're like, own. watch the yeah. movie so you enjoy the movie, but yeah. the painting the miniatures. Or don't paint them. So, I mean, I just mean like, like, mm -hmm. like, just take your time. Play one. They're not making any more scenarios, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some other, mm -hmm. like, uh, fan-made stuff going on. But, mm -hmm. like, in general, there's only a set amount of scenarios. Play a scenario. Uh, if although, take, this if, is fantasy if you play, fight. If you play, that means that art yeah. is going to be used for generations yeah, yeah, to come. Yeah, art itself. Our grandchildren. Yeah, we'll be using that art. Kids. But that game is going to be, you. I mean, each of those quests, just, you know, mm -hmm. have fun with it. Play mm -hmm. it 20 times if you want to. Then mm -hmm. when you're ready and you're tired of it, move on to the next one. I mean... And the, and, the, and the other thing is, like, yes, there are some characters that can be kind of bad, and you want to use them because you think they're fun, and mm -hmm. some archetypes that are you really want to use them. Not a, not all the heroes are equal, and some of the deck, decks that you might make, or your pet decks, maybe they won't work. Change it out. Or and you, play kind against... of, you have to like that puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. That's the deck that gets back to the deck yeah. construction stuff. You've got to like that puzzle of replaying it and figuring out how to make a deck yeah. that works and there's a great community if you're looking for like the ability to like have a whole community supporting you know your interest in the game to be talk to people um it's there you know and i mean like the octagon thing like you can play with people all over the world uh you know and and, and it saves your decks it's i don't play it personally because mm -hmm. i like the game tactile nature of the game or whatever but you know that aspect of it is, is, is there i do well. feel a little bit of a responsibility to caution people like yeah. if this is going to be a new thing for a lot of people, these living card games mm -hmm. in this series. And it's hard to know ahead of time if that's going to be something you enjoy. And it's not really mm -hmm. something I enjoy. And that, you know, it, it may be for you. It could. I can mm -hmm. see how this would be the perfect thing for someone. They would just totally embrace it. But I could also see someone thinking they're going to like this. And then realizing that the deck construction stuff is just not what they want to do. They yeah. want to, they want to sit down. Not every game, game is for every person. And the, the fact is, there's there's tens of thousands of games out there. If you don't like deck construction, you don't like that stuff. Play something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's other Lord of the Rings games out there. If you're really into mm -hmm. the into the theme, otherwise play something else. Yeah. So I mean, I, I really hope that this video has helped people that are like scratching their heads about how do they get into it. Uh, I, I really, you know, that's the only reason I, I made it is because I just recently because. You've got this whole thing going on, and, you're, and I'm like, hey, this is great. This is a great opportunity to, like, hopefully help some people. Like, because I try to answer stuff on forums and stuff, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a lot. Well, not only that, but I mean, this really is, it's not, it's, it's very unusual to find a game that is so, as a solo game, could be so satisfying yeah. for such a long block of time, mm -hmm. and... Boy, if you are looking for a solo game that might capture you, that really might thrill you, mm. you kind of owe it to yourself to try Lord of yeah. the Rings, especially if, if you like yeah. the theme. If I you're mean, looking for a game, yeah. Wow, if this hits a spot for you like it hit for Greg, it's yeah. a, you're in for a world of fun. Well, I hope that either this is, allows you to uh, find something that you love or you've 
bought into the game and you're scratching your head as to where to where to go i hope that helps you or it helps you to dodge a bullet because you're like that is a hard pass for me mm -hmm. so i hope that uh, one of those things uh was helpful for you comment below yeah, let maybe us know. i'll get around to, <laughs> hopefully i get around to answering it mm -hmm. and uh don't yeah, count on it though because uh, normally the emails to greg go right in the black hole into the garbage they never really come in. out yeah Okay, well, thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for yeah. thanks for doing this. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>